Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Chasing Dreams podcast. Today, we are talking about staying motivated. Okay. And that is right on top because 2020 has been a whirlwind thus far and we need to stay motivated. And to help us do that, I have Maya Louise. She is, she was born in the beautiful Queen City of Charlotte, North Carolina. (laughs) The Queen City. She is a proud and humble combat army veteran. So thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, She's currently studying sociology at North Carolina A&T. Life on the outside has looked easy, but it has been no fairy tale. She's had to pick herself up and start over numerous times. It has been a part of her journey, so she doesn't complain about the obstacles at all. Miss Maya, thank you and welcome to the podcast. How are you today? I am great. Thank you for having me today. Absolutely. So I like to start off every conversation with asking one question. What is the dream for you? The dream for me would be to have peace. And by peace, I mean um, just a peace of mind, um, peace of confidence, um, I guess a piece of money too. Hello. But, <laughs> but just that peace that kind of brings um, happiness and so forth to your life even in the middle of chaos. Absolutely. That piece that surpasses all understanding. All of it. Okay. <laughs> so when did you realize the dream and how has it changed over the years? Um, I realized the dream, um, I'd say at a semi-early age, maybe age 18-ish, um, I guess the first life obstacle that I overcame um, was my parents letting me know that they were going to be divorcing the same time whenever I was getting ready to move out to attend North Carolina A&T the first go round. Mm. Um, So just that realization that I'm human, I'm no better than anyone else. Um, um, Any life um, challenge that could happen, I was capable of actually experiencing that. Mm -hmm. Um, So just having to reevaluate things. um, I dropped out the first go round at A&T, joined the military, then after the military, I was like, okay, Maya, you're, you're in your 30s. You mm-hmm. don't have time to make excuses now. Now is the time to live the dream. Whatever the dream is, um, just go along with it. Right. And having that flexibility to kind of just shift and flow as it does change and understanding that that's okay. Yes. Yes, that is so... and realizing that it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> right. For sure. For sure. So as one of our veterans, how has serving in the military shifted your perspective on life? Mm, um, definitely um, has opened up my eyes. Um, I, I'd say I'm well diverse um, in ways of um, I can work with men or women. I can work in the office. I can work outside, um, hands-on activity. Um, not only that, I did spend nine months in Afghanistan, so just that kind of um, awareness, Mm. um, awareness and always being prepared, kind of. Sometimes it shows negatively as PTSD, but I can say that, honestly, um, part of the bigger picture of it um, is that I'm literally trained for almost anything. Yes. And while in the moment, I can imagine those didn't feel like fun lessons to learn. Oh, no. (laughs) I would like to ask, like, in hindsight, are you appreciative of those lessons? um, And how are they currently serving you as well? Um, Yes, I'm very appreciative of the lessons. um, Because, yes, as you're going through it, as you're running the (laughs) um, PT test, as you're doing the ruck march, as you're um climbing the wall all of that you're just like okay is this what I really want right. <laughs> but af- but after you accomplish it you're just like oh that wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was and then you're able to speak to someone else that may be going through mm-hmm. um something similar that may be thinking about joining the military like okay girl look you can do it you might can't wear your lashes but you can right. do it <laughs> I remember it was so funny. I was um, in my early 20s and I was trying to figure everything out. And I'm like, okay, I don't know. And I was considering joining the army, um, but I wanted to join at like 
I wanted to work in HR before the army. Yes. And I was talking to my mom and she was like, she's like, you know, that means you're going to be working out all the time. And I was like, oh, well, great. I'll be ashamed. You know? <laughs> and she was like, even when it's raining. And that one fact, I was like, uh, <laughs> this isn't for me. Um, just be, I hate rain. I can't stand it. And so to have to be outside and then work out outside in rain, that was it's enough crazy. for this. I'm going to be honest. I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> I cannot, cannot. Yes. So let's shift a little bit into the empowerment space. Like, what would you say is the importance of women's empowerment? This day and age, we just need to stick together as a whole in general. Yeah. Um, it seems, well, not to blame Generation X, but. Um, our generation needs to continue to be a strong minded and strong willed to kind of show the younger folks coming up. Like, look, it's not all about your body. It's not all about your looks. It's about your brain. What skills do you have? What do you possess? What do you actually bring to the table besides your looks? Mm -hmm. Um, And just in general, like it's tough enough being a female, having to prove yourself, um, having to show that you do deserve respect you do deserve a certain pay grade so on and so forth (laughs) like that um just in general just sticking together we can have our spats tit for tat whatever but overall the big picture um is bigger than any disagreement that anyone could have Mm -hmm. for sure for sure so I know you have two organizations um, that you're kind of heading, Jubilee Empowerment and then also Dream Last 214. So what would you say is your vision behind those organizations? Um, at first, um, Jubilee Empowerment is taken after um, uh, kind of the foundation that my mother had set. Mm-hmm. Um, her, her dream was geared more towards veterans in general, women veterans, Helping them with homelessness, um, was your benefits. Mom also a veteran? Was yes, your mom yeah. also a veteran? Veteran, awesome. Yes, she was in the she was a Navy chaplain. Mm, that's exciting. Yes, um, so it's kind of always just been in my blood to give back, to help, to have someone extra in the house that may need to stay a couple nights, take a shower. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why I know for sure, um, Jubilee Empowerment. Plus, with my own obstacles and my own. Um, failures just knowing that you kind of have someone that can relate to you we might not have gone through the same situation but similar situations and I can kind of help to navigate or you can help me to navigate and that way we come up with the plan of action Mm -hmm. Um, dream lash was more for fun Um, (laughs) (laughs) I love lashes people are always asking me about lashes so I figured I might as well Make it, yeah. Do something with it. Um, at first, I went and got certified for lash extensions, but it's nowhere near the same as being licensed. Mm. Um, so kind of put that to the side for a second. And then I was like, okay, Maya, you had a plan going. Let's get back to that plan. So mm-hmm. I probably took maybe two years off. And oh. then maybe this year, right after my birthday, because my birthday is actually February 14, so that's uh-huh. where 214 comes. Okay. I was like, okay. Let's just do it. Slash 214. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, I feel the same way about, um, I am starting to get into the t-shirt lane. Um, I've always loved statement t-shirts. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, and even when I have speaking engagements, like I'll wear a statement shirt and, you know, some cute pants and some heels, yeah. you know. So I'm like, what well, heck? I'm advertising for everybody <laughs> else. I'm not for advertising as- myself. <laughs> <laughs> like, I might as well be my own brand ambassador. Like, good grief. Yes. Um, but I love a good statement tee. So, you know, transitioning into that that lane, I'm like, well, this is a no-brainer. Like, I love it. Right. I wear them. I enjoy them. I have and a whole- It doesn't world. feel like work. That part. Yeah, <laughs> that part for sure. So I know you said um, you started at a and you ended up dropping out, going to the military, and then decided to go back. What was your driving force behind attending an HBCU and then why North Carolina A&T specifically? Okay, so... <laughs> 
Um, I'd say the first go round, my first choice, um, because we were actually stationed in, um, my mom was stationed at Fort Bragg, so we were in Fayetteville. Mm. My first choice that I had always said was going to be UNC Charlotte, because I just absolutely, I love the Queen City. Okay. Charlotte, UNC Charlotte told me no. So I was a little discouraged, but at the same time, majority of my cousins and friends at the time were doing either North Carolina A&T or Winston-Salem State. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to go to Winston because nothing's wrong with Winston-Salem State, but Mm -hmm. um, I just didn't, Winston just wasn't calling my name as Greensboro was. Mm. Um, So first go round at um, A&T, just absolutely loved it, loved it so much that I partied my little self to death. (laughs) Yes, and so um, ended up dropping out working full-time at, um, I think, American Express was the call center that was there. Um, But at the same time, everybody that I was partying with was still graduating, going on to grad school. So I was like, okay, Maya, what are we going to do? We got to figure something out. We got got to do something because the um, it's almost like the lifestyle that you're accustomed to or the lifestyle that you hope to live, that wasn't, Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that without... um, some type of foundation Mm -hmm. not to say that a degree is necessary in every aspect but just for me personally um a degree it was necessary Mm -hmm. um so even um my time in the service um like i did a class here or there at strayer but nothing compares to um a and t even the whole time that i was out of school every homecoming i was at homecoming um if i could attend i was there it's just that um that knowledge, that experience, the information that they're putting out is information that um, unless I actually went and seeked it on my own, it's in, no one would have actually taught me that. Um, but just the, even the females that I have come across, um, Dr. Wade per se, um, she's a female veteran also, mm-hmm. um, but just that personal piece that I've kind of um, connected with everybody there and it's, and it's no experience like an HBCU experience. <laughs> I have heard. Um, <laughs> I did not have the pleasure of going to an HBCU. Um, for me, the challenge is I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland, okay. which is the richest black county in America. I didn't recognize the value because I grew like I grew up as the majority. Okay. I grew up, I was complete teacher. opposite. So then that's probably, that, exactly. that makes sense. Yes. So I grew up, I had black teachers, black principals, black <laughs> lawyers, black doctors, black, like uh, police officers, like black judges, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't abnormal to see people in places of power who looked like you. Like that's yeah. how I grew up. And so uh, when Virginia Tech offered me a full scholarship, I was like, okay, whatever. And then I get there and I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> like, I knew it wasn't going to be PG County, Maryland, but I didn't think I was going to be the only black person in my class. Yeah. Like, uh, huh? You know, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Um, but I minimized the importance of it because I took for granted that that, like, how I grew up wasn't normal. Okay. You see what I mean? Yes. Um, and while there are other, you, you know, there are plenty of counties in Maryland that are close by that are not all predominantly black. Um, so, you know, I had exposure to white people, but like I had <laughs> a place where everywhere I looked, someone looked like me. Yes. And so because of that, I didn't see the need to go to an HBCU. Because my whole life, I, like, I, you were at an HBCU. <laughs> my whole life was an HBCU. And so, you know, I, I do miss that I didn't get that kind of experience. Um, and I'm actually considering it from a grad school perspective um, for my second master's. But I'm also like, you know, that undergrad experience, I, I've, listen, I've visited North Carolina A&T a few times, okay? I'm, okay, then. I'm <laughs> Of the fun to be had. Um, <laughs> but that's pretty much how I kind of like compensated for it was I ended up just traveling to different schools a lot um, through my connections with sorority and, you know, things like that. And I just would 
go visit schools and um, Virginia Tech is it, it can be a party school, but it, it's a different kind of party. <laughs> different kind of party. <laughs> So I'd like to pivot a little bit um, based on previous conversation. I do want to ask one, like a little bit of a personal question, but why is it offensive to ask a woman why she doesn't have children in your (laughs) That question there. To me, because there's so many reasons, there can be so many reasons as to why a woman does not um, have a child. Um, whether it be medical, mm-hmm. um, mentally, might not be prepared, um, not personally, but for some females, um, their upbringing may, may have been um, sexually assaulted. Mm-hmm. So that may just be a... Um, a reason not to, or a concern. Not to, yes. Um, for me personally, I want that old school dream where you meet mm. your best friend, y'all fall in love, then you go get married, then the baby comes in the baby carriage. Yeah. Um, I've just kind of been able to, I guess it's, in essence, it's my body and I've just been able to control it. Right, um, right. And so here we are 34 years later, but. <laughs> it's on the way. Child. I know little Maya Jr. is coming. She is but on I, the I way. I haven't been in a rush or anything like that. Yes. And I think another uh, piece of or perspective of that question um, that I share is you never know who's lost. So I've miscarried twins in 2016. You can't look at me and know that. Yes. You don't know my story. Um, And even like I started a brand new job three days after miscarrying my twins and no one knew until I said something. Mm -hmm. So when you ask a question like, oh, why don't you have children? Or when are you going to have kids? I could have miscarried yesterday. Yesterday, literally. I would have never known because you're not inside of my vagina. You know? <laughs> <That part. laughs> you're not inside my pants. That part. Um, and a lot of miscarriages happen, you know, the first couple of months. And, you know, it's one of those things where... um you just never know what people are dealing with and they could be trying to have children and can't. And that's been a pain point. Um, And even for me, like I ended up miscarrying my twins at five and a half months. Mm. But if you didn't Mm. know I was pregnant, I really was, I didn't even start showing until month five. Mm. You know what I mean? So I would tell people, I'm like, yeah, I'm pregnant with twins. They're like, wait, what? Right. <laughs> so you don't know what people are dealing with. You don't know, know what's going on in their lives. You don't know. So asking a woman, why don't you have children? When are you going to have children? All of these things. Um, first of all, if you have to ask, it's not your business. The social standards have been in place to make you think that as a woman, your place is to exactly. what be the nurturer, have the babies, cook, clean, do whatever, whatever. But honey, we out here trying to have businesses, um, trying to do our own handyman's work. <laughs> like <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not, I'm not on that one. I'm fighting somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna phone a friend on that one. <laughs> but you know, just in general, I and I've had to um, just speak to a couple friends, like close friends, like just because that was y'all's goal to go get married and to have a family. Like it just wasn't my top priority. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it still and isn't like, honestly. On the list. I just have other things I want to do too. Exactly. For yes. Sure. For sure. So what would you say is your number one secret to success? <laughs> Staying prayed up. Yeah. Um, not to push religion onto anyone, but who, whatever your higher being is or whatever your spirit is, literally just staying prayed up. <laughs> um, I recently went and got Peace Be Still tattooed mm-hmm. right here because there's moments when you feel like you should be doing something, you need to go do something, but in actuality, you just need to slow down for a moment. And just kind of let things play out. Not to say just sit back and be complacent. No. But you may want to just take a step back. Maybe go ask three different people's opinions. Mm -hmm. Three different personalities. That's that's usually my go-to. That's a good Three personalities. I might ask my mom and dad. And then I might go ask someone over here. And then go ask someone over here. And then merge together. 
yes, putting everyone's thoughts together. And then that kind of helps me to better process whatever it is that I might be going through because they, again, we aren't all going through the same thing, but similar experiences. Mm -hmm. And getting that perspective from multiple different people who care about your best interests, um, but look at it from different vantage points is so huge. It's so helpful to get that feedback, to get that insight, to get that, um, like they may see something that you don't. Yes. Like your friends and family can see your blind spots. Yes. Uh, for sure. So that is huge. What final thoughts do you have for us as an audience? Mm, whenever it comes to staying motivated, just stay motivated. Um, whatever the end goal may be, just know that the journey along the way is the fun part. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's the I can say, honestly, with this degree, me going to school, stopping school, experiencing life, seeing what work is like without a degree, (laughs) the reasons Mm -hmm. as to why your name on that piece of paper does honestly make a difference, or even just that trade skill, like, um, add it all to your resume. (laughs) It doesn't, it doesn't matter. I've, I've job top a few times since getting out of the army. But hey, I literally, I've literally learned something with each position. Absolutely. So this has been a very great conversation. And if my audience wants to connect with you, um, to you know, dig a little deeper, where can everyone find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram. I am underscore Maya Louise, just like Maya Angelo, M A Y A L O U I S E. Um, for Dream Lash 214, it's simply Dream Lash 214. And then also Jubilee Empowerment is Jubilee Empowerment or email Empowerment Jubilee at hotmail.com. Awesome. And we'll be sure to drop all of that in the description notes. Maya, thank you so much for participating in the Chase Dream Lash. Thank you for having me on. Thank Absolutely. You. It was our honor. Um, we definitely learned a lot today on staying <laughs> motivated, okay? Yes. Stay motivated. Thank you. Yes.